Hi friends, do you know what is common to these things that you see in your everyday lives? An electric bulb, toaster, electric iron, electric heater and a simple fuse. That's right, they all work on the heating effect of electric current and it's going to be the topic of this video. We'll look at the factors affecting the amount of heat energy produced and the practical applications of the heating effect of current. First, let me ask you, what is electric current? Electric current is the flow of electric charge and numerically, it is defined as the rate of flow of electric charge. The formula of current is charge divided by time. What is the unit of current? Correct, the unit is ampere. Electric current can produce three important effects. Heating effect, magnetic effect and chemical effect. An example of heating effect is the wire, the filament in the toaster. When electric current passes through the filament in the toaster, it heats up and that's how you can toast the bread. In magnetic effect of electric current, when electric current passes through the wire, it produces a magnetic field around it. Application of magnetic effect is electromagnets. In chemical effect of current, when electric current passes through a substance, it can cause a chemical reaction. An example is electrolysis of water. When electric current passes through water, it decomposes water into hydrogen and oxygen. We'll discuss the heating effect of electric current in detail in this video. Other two effects will be discussed in separate videos. Let's look at the heating effect of electric current in detail. When electric current passes through a high resistance wire, such as a tungsten filament in an electric bulb or a nichrome wire in an electric oven, the resistance wire becomes very hot and it produces heat. This is the heating effect of current. Does electric current cause heating effect in regular copper wires? Yes, but since the copper wires have a very low resistance, the amount of heat energy produced is very less. It's negligible. So when we say heating effect of current, we normally mean wires of high resistance, such as the tungsten wire in the electric bulb or nichrome wires used in toasters and electric ovens. What is the cause of heating effect of current? Why is heat energy produced in a resistance wire? To understand, let's consider the example of motion. You know that when there's motion, there is friction involved and friction produces heat energy. For example, when a car moves, there's friction in the tires and friction produces heat. Or when you rub your hands, there is friction and you can feel the heat energy produced in your hands. Similarly, when electric current flows through a resistance wire, the free electrons are moving through the wire. During their motion, the electrons face a friction or what we call as resistance. Why? Because the moving electrons, they collide with the atoms in the wire. During the collision, some of the kinetic energy is transferred to the atoms in the wire. So the atoms vibrate with a greater energy and the temperature of the wire increases. So heat energy is produced in the resistance wire when current passes through it. And higher the resistance of the wire, more will be the heat produced. Do you know how much heat energy is produced in a current carrying wire? What factors does it depend on? These questions are answered by the Joule's law of heating. Joule's law of heating was proposed by James Prescott Joule. The SI unit of energy Joule is also named after him. According to the Joule's law of heating, the heat energy produced H is equal to I square RT, where I is the current in the wire, R is the resistance of the wire, and T is the time for which the current is passed through the wire. Let's take an example. 
Let's say a current of 2 ampere passes through a wire of resistance 100 ohm for 1 minute. So how much heat is produced in the wire? First, let's write the given data using symbols. So we have current I equal to 2 ampere, resistance R is 100 ohm and time T is 1 minute. We need to convert time to SI units. So T is 60 seconds. Now let's use the formula from Joule's law of heating H equal to I square RT and substituting the values and multiplying we get the heat energy is equal to 24,000 joules. What factors does the heat produced in a wire depend on? You don't have to learn them. Just use the formula from Joule's law of heating. H equal to I square RT. As you can see from the formula, the three factors are heat energy is directly proportional to the square of the current. Heat energy is directly proportional to the resistance of the wire and heat energy is directly proportional to the time for which the current flows in the wire. So just remember the three factors from the formula I square, R and T. Based on these factors, how will the heat produced be affected if the current in the wire is doubled? That's right, the heat produced will become four times since heat energy is directly proportional to the square of the current and 2 square is equal to 4. So the heat produced is 4 times more. Now what will happen if the resistance of the wire is doubled? Correct, the heat produced will also be doubled since heat is directly proportional to the resistance. And if instead of 1 minute, the current is passed through the wire for 5 minutes, then the amount of heat energy produced will be 5 times more. Let's place Joule's law of heating and the factors affecting the heat produced on our concept board. Do all the appliances that run on electricity convert all the electrical energy into heat energy? No, it's the electrical heating appliances such as electric heater, electric kettle, electric iron, geyser that convert most of the electrical energy to heat energy. But in the other appliances such as a fan, washing machine, mixer or grinder, most of the electrical energy is used to produce rotatory motion. So most of the electrical energy is converted to mechanical energy and only a small amount gets converted to heat energy. The heating effect of current has various applications in the working of electrical heating appliances, in electric bulbs to produce light and in the electric fuse. Let's look at these one by one. Electrical heating appliances such as electric iron, electric kettle, toaster, electric oven, room heaters, geysers, they all work on the heating effect of current. These appliances have a high resistance wire in them. This high resistance wire is called the heating element or the heating coil. You can easily see the heating element in the toasters and electric ovens. It is the coil that becomes red hot and glows. The heating element is a coil made of nichrome alloy. Now why does the heating element made of nichrome become very hot and it glows? but the copper wire carrying the current to the appliance does not become hot. That's right, because the nichrome coil has high resistance, but the copper wire has a very low resistance. So more heat is produced in the nichrome coil as compared to the copper wire. Nichrome alloy is used to make heating elements since nichrome has a high resistivity and it has a high melting point of about 1400 degrees centigrade. A high melting point is important since we don't want the heating element to melt off at high temperature. The heating effect of current is used in the simple electric bulb to produce light. Do you know how the electric bulb works? The electric bulb is made of a very thin high resistance tungsten filament. 
Now when electric current passes through the tungsten filament, it becomes white hot and emits light. That's why these type of bulbs are called incandescent bulbs. The filament reaches a high temperature of about 2500 degrees Celsius and it emits light. Now why is tungsten metal used for making the filament? Tungsten has a very high melting point of about 3400 degrees Celsius. So it does not melt at the high temperature of the bulb. The filament can be made easily since tungsten is highly flexible and it has a low rate of evaporation at high temperature. Do you know which gas is present in the electric bulb? That's right, it's unreactive gases such as argon or nitrogen or a mixture of the two. Now why not air? Because the oxygen in the air would quickly burn up the hot tungsten filament. But chemically inert gases such as argon or nitrogen, they don't react with the tungsten element and increase the life of the filament. Now one thing to keep in mind is that in the electric bulb, more than 95% of the electrical energy is converted to heat energy and only less than 5% gets converted to light energy. That's why the incandescent electric bulbs are not power efficient and they are being replaced by CFL or LED type bulbs. These don't work on the heating effect of current and they are much more power efficient. The heating effect of current is used in the electric fuse. Have you seen the simple type of cartridge fuse? Let me show you. You can find the cartridge fuse in these kind of power strips that have surge protection. If you open this, you'll find the cartridge fuse. As you can see, there is a thin fuse wire in this glass tube. The purpose of the electric fuse is to act as a safety device and prevent excess current flowing into the appliance. Let's say your computer can take a maximum of 5 ampere current. And let's say due to some fault, a high current of 10 ampere flows to your computer. Usually the main fuse in the house will stop the excess current. But let's say due to some issue, the main fuse does not work. Now the circuits in your computer can get damaged. But if a cartridge fuse is there, then when high current flows through the fuse wire, a lot of heat will be produced. The fuse wire will melt and this will break the circuit and no current can flow through it. And so it will prevent your computer from getting damaged. So a 10 rupee cartridge fuse can save your 40, 50,000 rupee computer. The fuse wire is usually made of solder, which is an alloy of tin and lead. It has a high resistance and low melting point. Remember, heat produced is directly proportional to the resistance. The resistance of the fuse wire is high so that enough heat is produced. And the fuse wire should have a low melting point so that when high current flows through it, it will easily melt and break the circuit. So the fuse wire is a safety device that works on the heating effect of current. Let's pin these applications of the heating effect of electric current on our concept board. I hope the concept of heating effect of electric current is super clear to you now. So look around in your everyday life to see where you're using the heating effect of current. I'm sure you'll find it in many things such as an electric iron, toaster, geyser, electric heater and so on.